This is Penn State Robot in Three Days, um, and this is our prototype discussion. We have five prototypes that we've been working on all day today, and we're excited to show those to you guys. So we're going to start off with the climber team. All right, so the first part of our climber is one of the goals is we're trying to score the trap note. Um, so we're doing that with this arm. So this arm, uh, we'll talk a lot more about later, but it flips all the way over and it will intake from that side. And then this is significantly more than the one foot extension outside the frame perimeter right now. Um, so that's something that we'll have to change in a final design. But the idea is that the arm starts low and comes up inside the chain. And then um, we'll have some, uh, like a hook on the arm to grab the chain and bring it down into here. And then Jeremiah's gonna talk about these wheels and the climber. Yep, so with the climber, there are wheels along the front, so when we start to lift, it will glide along the backboard, the plexiglass, and slide up so that way he can easily deposit into there. So there's two on each side, or one on each side, and then there are poles which will have hooks on them. Currently, these poles are just really long because they're prototypes, we don't want to cut anything down, but they will be about this tall in the final um, prototype. That's about three foot tall, three feet-ish. Um, and then, so there's just, uh, surgical tubing, stretchy tubing on the top for the spring it up. And then down here, it's just a Polina wench. This Neo, it's a Neo, just a normal Neo. It's geared down the 120 right now. Is that correct? Yeah. And then that'll spool up. So we'll drive into the wall. Our rollers will touch against the wall right before we're about to climb. The chain is in line with our hooks. And then we'll go ahead and climb up. We still have to fix our CG. It's a little off right now, but something to be fixed. Stop. Stop. So, right now, we had some difficulties when during calculations. We didn't account for the chain sag. Um, so, we are currently a little bit too low to deposit it into the trap door. Um, with the kit chassis, it looks like it's going to be impossible to do. To, it's gonna look like it's gonna be impossible to pull the chain the whole way down to get enough height on here. So you're either gonna have to do some type of elevator system with your arm to get it high enough, but we're still in final prototypes. We're not done yet, so we're still gonna keep working on that. Um, anything else? So something to note about the chain that we didn't account for correctly is in its current position, the lowest point is two, foot, two feet six, and depending on where you push on it, it depends on how high it will go. So if you push really close to it, it will actually drop lower. If you drop, like right in the middle at one point, it will drop lower if you push there. However, if you push further out, it will push higher, and the center will go up to wherever your point of contacts are. So there's a, like a middle point that you have to find where it stops sagging and where it starts going up for the tra trapezoid part of the chain. Um, we had accounted for it going up when we did our calculations, but we weren't far enough, so it ended up sinking, which is why we are three inches too short now. This is um, just a simple intake design. Um, it uses two rollers to suck it in and then just holds on to the ring kind of like that. So we'll give it a couple demos here. And it's not powered by motors, it's just powered by hand, but Sam's gotten right pretty good at it. <laughs> so it's able to pick up off the ground uh, from around like a 45 degree-ish angle all the way up to vertical. If you wanted to get it lower, you might be able to move this wheel forward to get more of like an overbite to get it onto the, uh, get it from the ground. But it's simple, just rotate the wheels against each other to pick it up, and now you're holding the ring just fine. Using both wheels, you can rotate the ring around. You can rotate it back, forth, up, down, holds it pretty steady. And then of course, when you're ready to be done with the, when you're ready to deposit, you can rotate them with each other and it deposits just fine. The main idea with this prototype is to try to get what is the like minimum viable uh, way to grab this. There's a lot of different ways that we can use to intake the ring, but it's only like we want to try to see what's like the smallest and possible way to get it, and what's a good way that allows us to be able to have a f wide range of motion on manipulating the ring. We noticed pretty early on with the amp that it's pretty hard to get the uh, ring, get the note in the amp when it's horizontal, so you want a slight angle downwards at the minimum, or at the best to drop it in vertically. And with a design like this, you're able to you know, flip your arm around or whatever, and you're able to get that nice angle into the amp whenever you want to. 
This won't shoot into the uh, this won't shoot into the speaker, but you know there's other designs for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a big thing that this design could be used for is for simplifying something. You don't want to build a whole actuating wrist or something if you can manipulate the note with like three wheels like this. Um, it definitely could simplify teams' designs once you're. Um, looking at a whole arm that moves or something like that. But this was just a proof of concept for our understanding of the game. Um, one main negative of this is if the note is on the ground and your robot's coming at it, you can't, um, it's, you have to position yourself pretty well to get onto it. There's not a lot of room for lateral movement. You have to kind of grab the ring. As long as you're like laterally within the hole, it won't self-center is the biggest issue as well. So you have to get pretty personal. Now, one potential method to fix this is some members suggested expanding this using two wheels, using three wheels, or just making a longer row of this kind of setup to be able to hold the ring and manipulate it. But that's of course for further experimentation. Yeah, so um, hopefully you guys found this design helpful and it could definitely be used to uh, actuate a note around. Okay, so basically our design is an intake that can go in the amp, so it also counts the outtake, an intake that can go in the amp and in the shooter, in the speaker. So these front wheels are gonna spin, so it's gonna be at an angle. These front wheels spin, and it brings the ring up and through these wheels and it holds it here. The wheels in the front are our fly wheels. So there's two wheels in the back. These wheels will hold it back here so the fly wheels can start spinning. So once the fly wheels start spinning, we turn it, we aim it, and then we shoot it out. So we've done tests on it before and it gets a lot of height. So right now we have one to one, we don't have any gear ratios on it, so it can spin as fast as possible. So then if we want to go for the amp, because it's at an angle already from the in, from the intake, so if we're going for the amp, we would go over here. And then because it's at an angle already, we would just push it in to the amp. Awesome. Thank you guys. All right, so we were focusing on intaking, uh, purely just uh, one and two rollers. So the two main ideas that we had were a uh, top roller with a, just a plate on the bottom. Uh, we were running into a ton of issues with that. Um, it was just not picking up well. We were getting certain ones to work, but in very specific situations where they're perfectly centered or the lip was really, really close to the ground, almost flush, which is impossible on a game field. So we moved on to a passive roller on the bottom active roller on top. That was all right, but we were also running into the same issues again. So our final design is using a uh, active top roller, active bottom roller at a very sharp angle. And something that we were learning, we started with compliant wheels on the front and the back. Um, we changed to a pull noodle on the back because the, compliant, the friction on the compliant wheels, so let's say you're picking up uh, something from over here it rolls in and if you have compliant wheels on the back it will just force its way up into this metal and get stuck the idea with the pull noodle is it doesn't have that much friction so it kind of self centers until the the full two points of contact come into play and then it gets sucked in so it's a very simple way of vectoring just with a pull noodle on the back we also tried the pool noodle on the front, but there's just not enough friction to consistently pick up game pieces. So, and, and the reason we want the pool noodle or a, a really like long row of wheels is any gap in the wheels, the ring or the note is going to get sucked up in there and not go all the way through. Yep, so definitely solid pieces all the way across the frame perimeter is probably the way to go. You run it. Do one from the side. Um, all right.
right, so <clears throat> what we did was the arm part, this whole part right here that attaches to the intake, and what we did was design it so it's able to score in the trap and also score in the amp. So the way that we did this is we have it kind of on a slope, so when the arm comes up right here, it kind of just drops it into either the trap or the amp. Um, and then based on that, I mean, you saw earlier with the trap, it didn't exactly work, but we'll have to redesign that, but everything so far is pretty good. Demonstration, comes right here. 